In the name of the Father and the Son of the Holy Spirit. Well, good morning to you all. Um, you know, looking at, looking at my life, as far as I know, and I stress as far as I know, I don't have any real enemies. By that, I mean that it, there is no one that I wish were dead. Not recently. <laughs> there is no one, and this I mean, there is no one I hope does not succeed in life and health. There is no one, and I really hope this, though I am not really sure, there is no one who wishes me dead. So in Jesus, in his countercultural Sermon on the Mount, says that we should love enemies. That really doesn't sound too difficult to me. You know, um, I could say, and I think that I've said this, and many of you may have said it as well, that I love, I can love someone while not really liking that person, right? Avoiding them, avoiding people, therefore, helps with the illusion that I don't hate them. Well, you know, I don't like them, so, you know, you're on one side of the street, I'm on the other, and that's where it stands. But I love you. I love you. Now, because if I don't hate them, I must love them. Let me remind you what the gospel has said. You have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, so that you may be children of your Father in heaven. For he makes his sun rise on the evil and on the good, and sends rain on the righteous and on the unrighteous. For if you love those who love you, what reward do you have? Do not even the tax collectors do the same? And if you greet only your brothers and sisters, what more are you doing than others? Do not even the Gentiles do the same? So, hmm, hmm. Avoidance doesn't seem to be an option with Jesus, does it? He always makes things tough for us. I am required as a Christian to greet all people, whether I love or like them or not. And if I only love or like the people who love and like me, I am not being the person I need to be. And so this loving business is a lot more difficult than I thought. Now our current political climate, our current toxic political climate, may I say that? <laughs> Thank you. Uh, has highlighted differences between people and groups, between family members, between friends. I'll give you an example. Uh, in my family, uh, on one Thanksgiving, uh, we all had to sign a, well, sign a pledge, promise that we wouldn't discuss politics, <laughs> particularly the election. I don't know why. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, that's really what is all, you know, that's whatever, it's come down to that. Because it's created animosity where it didn't exist before. And while I don't wish anyone ill, I so strongly disagree with some of the public statements made by our politicians that I have tried not to watch the news. But I, I, I seem to have gotten a case of obsessive compulsive disease with this. Don't be retired and have a lot of time on your hands. Uh, because the first thing you can, you can do in the morning is, is key up Google News. And there are hundreds of articles about everything, everything you will want to read about. 
See, it's become a compulsion. It just gets me angry and depressed and unhappy and fearful. And when I do that, I feel as though I'm struggling between non-hate and, advo and, and advocating for what I believe to be biblical imperatives about justice, about peace, about what the Hebrews called shalom. And there are people who disagree with me, who could, who could disagree with my principles, my beliefs, who could, who, could, who could write that previous sentence with just as much honesty as I did. So what to do? What can we do? What should we do? Well, with this blip of a sermonette from Jesus, it has convinced me to pray, not just for the things I want to see happen in the areas of justice and peace, but for the people with whom I so deeply disagree. Praying for them is much more difficult than not hating them. Not hate is passive. Prayer is proactive. Prayer allows you to connect in a spiritual way. Okay, where did it go? Oh, I'm not kidding. Here we go. <laughs> All right. <laughs> now look, I'm not really certain that prayer will change their hearts. As we often say in their prayers about others who are trying to not hate. Let's face it, we're dealing with some pretty hard hearts these days. One of, our, one of our leaders is on record as saying his, his favorite Bible passage is an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. And apparently it seems to be the only one he knows. <laughs> but I do believe, I do believe that prayer will likely change my own heart. When I pray for someone, and yet, yes, it's difficult to pray for our enemies, our perceived enemies, people who we think are going to harm us. Yes, it's difficult. But when I pray for them, I start to see that person as I imagine God does, as a flawed human being made in God's image, just like me. Praying will not make me less convinced of the rightness of justice, of peace, of shalom. But it will help me see the person on the other side as a real person, a person imperfect, who is in pain, who hurts, who worries just like I do not as someone I want to defeat, to crush, to humiliate. Praying, I think, will make me work harder for justice, but it will also make my heart a little softer. So I made a pledge to myself, and perhaps you would join me. For the next week, I'm going to order my prayer life this way. I've given myself uh, three choices. I'm going to choose one public figure a day, or I'm going to choose the one who needs it the most, <laughs> or I'm going to go this way, number one on day one, 
number one and two on day two, number one, two, and three on day three, and uh, maybe we'll get the whole cabinet by then. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> So for the next week, I'm going to pick people who I think, John's opinion, John's point of view, who I think is really wrong-headed about justice issues. And I'm going to pray for those people. And I expect that I will be changed. Maybe I'll be a little less snarky and sarcastic, but <laughs> who knows? My mother would rise from her grave to see that one, but, <laughs> but I expect that I will be changed. Not in my convictions, but in my humanity. And I hope that is true for you as well. Amen.